Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to see you all today. Today is the 28th of December 2020, so it's just a few days after Christmas. Um, it's actually a public holiday here today in Australia, so I'm not sure about the rest of the world but um, definitely here it is. But I'm still going live today, even though it's a public holiday, because a lot of us are still at home. Um, with COVID, a lot of us aren't able to travel or anything like that. So um, I thought, why not still go live, still keep my regular, um, regular live time that I do every week, four o'clock on Mondays. So yeah, so you might be watching this back later on. Um, just one sec, I'll get rid of that, there we go. You might be watching this um, live on Facebook, you might be watching the replay on Facebook, or you may be watching this on my YouTube channel later on. Uh, whichever way you're watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Um, if you are watching, feel free to leave a comment, and even if you are watching the replay, feel free to leave a comment. If you're watching on my YouTube channel and you haven't yet subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. So you can do that by um, clicking on the subscribe button down the bottom. You'll see that over here, um, down on the right hand side below this video. Um, and there's a little bell icon there too. If you click on that, then you will be notified of all of my videos that I post. So let's see who we've got on today. We've got Fee and Susan and Gail. Hi everyone, we've got Glenda. Hi Glenda and Athena, hi Athena. Great to have you all here today. So let me call this up on my iPad so that I can watch all of your comments over there. Oops. Oh, I just, I went out of it. Hang on a sec, let me try that again. There we go, awesome. Okay, so I'll just get rid of the comments off my computer screen, I mean off my phone, and bring them up on my iPad so then I can view them there. It's less distracting for me when I'm filming, otherwise they keep flashing up in front of my face and um, I easily get distracted. <laughs> so tell me, oh hey Susan, great to have you here too. Awesome. Um, Hi Gail, it's great to have you here. You thought you'd have a look, you come to check me out. <laughs> That's awesome, so great to have you here. So um, we have a little bit of a chit chat first, um, just for a few minutes, and then we'll get to some crafting. I've got some brand new products to show you today, which are super, super cute. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about Celebration and our new upcoming uh, mini catalogue that's coming very, very soon as well. Um, but first of all, tell me about your Christmas. Did you all have a lovely Christmas? Now, I know not everybody celebrates Christmas and that's okay too. If you're here watching um, and you don't celebrate Christmas, that's okay. Um, but yeah, if you do celebrate Christmas, let me know how your day was. I would love to hear about it. We had, I realized after um, Christmas that I actually didn't take any photos of people. <laughs> I took photos only of the food, um, which was really funny. I realized afterwards, I think it's the first year I've not taken photos of people at Christmas. Um, oh, hey, Matthew, how are you? Thank you, Matthew. Yes, I did. I hope you did as well. Um, yeah, so we just had our immediate, just my immediate family, so my husband and our kids, um, and um, and our son's girlfriend as well came in the afternoon, which was lovely. Um, but yeah, our um, um, extended family, John's family, are over on the northern suburbs that are in lockdown at the moment with COVID, so unfortunately we weren't able to see them. Um, my sister and her family are up in, well, some of them are in Queensland, um, some of them are just south of Queensland, um, but of course we weren't able to see them and my extended family are in Victoria. So we're all kind of, yeah, just stay at home this year and have our own quiet Christmases um, with our immediate family. Um, and Glenda said she had a quiet one this year too. Yes, yeah. Matthew had a good one. That's Great, great to hear you had a good Christmas, Matthew. Hi, Amanda, great to have you here. So we're just talking about Christmas and um, and what everybody did. So we had, um, 
Um, oh, no worries, Tina Marie. That's all good. I've only just started, so you haven't missed too much. We're just talking about um, what our Christmas was like. So we had a um, lovely hot meal as usual. I did my um, marinated, oh, what, what is it? It's honey, maple, honey, maple, mustard, glazed ham. And I cooked that the day before. So I cooked that Christmas Eve so that it would be ready because it takes a while and, and everything. And then on the day I just cooked the turkey and some baked veggies. And so that was really yummy. Um, we made a pavlova in, we ended up having a big break between lunch and dessert because we were also full after lunch. So we didn't have dessert till probably in the evening, I think. I think dessert was in the evening. Um, and um, yeah, so we made a pavlova, all the girls decorated a pavlova. So that's usually the family favorite. So all good, yeah. Oh, all good over there in WA Gale and it's very hot. Ah, what's the temperature over there today? We um, we had a really hot one yesterday. It got up in, well actually it got up in the mid 30s. So I guess that's pretty typical for um, summer out here in the Western suburbs. But um, today's a bit of a funny old day. It's been warm and sunny and then it was raining a bit and then it came sunny again and now it's overcast again. It looks like it's gonna storm. So yeah, a bit of a funny one today. Um, you had a chilled day, Tina Marie? Awesome, that's the best kind I reckon. <laughs> and you had your dessert for dinner too. Yeah, we pretty much did that too. Leftovers and um, pavlova for dinner. And John doesn't eat pavlova, so he has um, cream caramel. We always get cream caramel, especially for him. So we didn't home make it this time. We bought the store-bought one. So that was good. Oh, 36 today. Good swimming weather. Yes, definitely. I think 36 was about what we had yesterday, Gail, as well. Yeah. So is the um, weather over there drier than over here, Gail? Like, is it because here it's quite humid? Um is it as humid over there in WA or is it more, uh, sorry, less humid, more of a dry heat? So, um, oh, you took dye shopping today, Tina Marie. Awesome. And it was muggy, but then nicer now. Yeah, it's cooled down a bit, I think, since the, um, the sun's gone down. But I did pop my head out this morning. It was a bit muggy too. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely that you took dye shopping. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah, so um, now this week is a um, busy, busy week. Oh, no humidity over there, Gail. That's awesome. <laughs> that will be so much more tolerable, I think. Yeah, very good. So 36 probably feels like our 25 or something then. <laughs> Oh, I have been to WA many, many years ago before having the children. Um, I've been over there twice, actually. Um, once I went for a bit of a holiday, um, John and I went over and did a bit of sightseeing and things. And then another time I went over when my then sister-in-law had a motorbike accident and I actually went over to care for her. So for about a week until my mum got there. Um, so I didn't get to see much that time, but it was lovely over there. Really loved, um, we went all around Perth and we didn't go too far out of Perth. I think we went a little bit north, but not too far. We pretty much stayed around Perth and Fremantle and places like that. It was really lovely over there. Maybe I'll come over again sometime, Gail, and come and visit you. Well, when we're out of COVID. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, Tina Marie wants to come over there, Gail. She doesn't cope with the humidity too well. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Great to see you. We're talking about our Christmas and what our Christmases were like. And we're talking about WA at the moment too, over in Western Australia. Those of you who may not be in Australia and don't know what we're talking about when we say WA, it's Western Australia. So over on the West Coast of Australia. Um, quite a different climate over there to over here on the East Coast. Um, and Fee, Fee had a quiet Christmas and the kids couldn't come down. Yeah, oh, that's such a shame, Fee. So you had a quiet one at home just with Glenn. So um, hopefully you were still able to enjoy your day and have a yummy lunch and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So let's talk about a little bit of news. 
So we still have our giant year-end closeout sale happening. Now there are a lot of things that are selling out, but there's still quite a lot still available. So I had a quick look just before I jumped on live again this week. Um, I looked again, I looked last week as well. You might remember if you were watching last week as well, I said the same thing. But um, each week, of course, there's going to be less available. So if there was anything at all that you still wanted from the August to December mini catalog, so this has got a lot of Christmas products, um, seasonal products like autumn products, um, Halloween if you celebrate Halloween. If you would like any of the products from there to put away for next year, um, the um, autumn products actually can be used any time of year, even though they're kind of autumn themed, but they're really lovely products that can be used at any time. Um, yeah, make sure you jump online to my online store and um, get the, grab those as soon as you can. Um, there's some great reductions, lots of um, savings, um, between 10 to 50% off a lot of those products. Um, so yeah, so just grab a bargain while they're still available. When you go to my online store, you'll see this banner pop up. So if you click on that banner, it'll automatically take you through to all of the products that are on sale um, in the year end closeout. If not, you can click, uh, you can just do a search. You'll see up on the left hand side, um, just over that side. Sorry, I'm working in reverse here. On the left hand side, when you go to my online store, you'll see there's a little um, magnifying glass. And if you click on that, then you can do a search for anything. If you just search for, um, just type in sale and then all the sale items will come up. Um, so yeah, so remember that. Uh, oh, Athena had a quiet day as well, a quiet Christmas, just with family. Oh, that's nice, Athena. Yeah, I think a lot of us um, had really quiet Christmases this year. I know that some families were able to gather with their, their wider family, but we did have limitations on the number of people we were allowed to have um, in our homes here in um, New South Wales, at least. I'm not sure about greater Australia, but here in New South Wales, we had limits on the number of people we were allowed to have. Um, so yeah, it made it all a little bit tricky. But, um, oh, and Fee said, yep, they had lots of TV and snacks. Well, that sounds like a nice relaxing day. That sounds awesome, actually. I have to plan one of those days really soon. <laughs> Maybe while John's on holidays too, I'll plan to have a TV day with him and we'll watch some movies together or something and I'll just take the day off from, from um, my business. Now, also, too, I just wanted to remind you that we also still have the Curvy Celebrations promotion at the moment. Um, I reminded you of this last week, but in case you missed it. So we have the um, Curvy Christmas stamp set and the um, classic Christmas 6x6 designer series paper. They are going to be going away really, really soon. So they'll be gone on the 4th of December. So, uh, sorry, 4th of Oh, December 4th of January see I'm already I don't even know where I'm at now I don't even know what the day is <laughs> so, so these ones will be going really soon if you um, liked them or you'd like to check them out have a look in my online store um, the curvy I've got to always check what they're called because there's so many curvies I get confused <laughs> So the quite curvy stamp set and the curvy dies, they are going to be carrying over into the new January to June mini catalog. So you'll still be able to get those in the new catalog. Um, but if you want all of them together as a bundle, that variety bundle is only available until the 4th of January. And I'm just double checking. Yes, I am telling you the right thing. But look, I even wrote it here. See, only available until 4th of January <laughs> to remind myself. So yeah, so check out those ones as well in my online store. Now we have got, um, so that's all the news that I have at the moment in terms of, of all of that. But of course, as you know, um, I've been talking about this a lot and um, promoting this a lot over the last few weeks. But we have got coming up our beautiful brand new, oh, this one got creased today. I had it folded over with the, um, the cover like, you know, folded back and I've actually creased my catalog. Oh, how sad, poor catalog. Um, but this is the beautiful January to June mini catalog that's going to be launching on the 5th of January. So super, super exciting. 
Um, and not only that, we have Celebration also starting on the 5th of January. And Celebration is um, one of the biggest sales that Cele um, Stampin' Up! does each year. Um, they do it every year. This time it's going to be running from January to uh, 5th of January to the 28th of February. And with Celebration, what that is, is this little brochure is jam-packed full of lots of free products that you can earn. And there's different ways that you can earn them. So you can earn them by shopping and spending over $90. And for every $90 you spend, you can select um, a product out of this um, Celebration brochure. And there's quite a lot. Actually, I need to count them up. There's quite a lot of free um, products in there. Um, also, too, if you host an, um, a party or a workshop during that time, um, now I am totally um, online at the moment because of COVID. I'm not doing any face-to-face -face classes or face-to-face -face, um, parties, but I can um, set up an online party if you would like to host one of those. And with qualifying qualifying sales you can get additional freebies so there's an additional free stamp set up for grabs um, plus with sales um, over $250 you get stampin rewards which means you get extra freebies so you get a certain but you get 10% or it does go up depending on your sales um, and then you can choose additional products um, that you get for free with that percentage of your um, party sales um, and then on top of that, if you decide that you love Stampin' Up! products so much that you want to get a consistent discount, so you want to get an ongoing 20% discount plus all the added bonuses and benefits of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, then when you join Stampin' Up! you actually can get um, five packs of 6 by 6 inch designer series paper that isn't even released yet. It's not releasing until our um, May annual catalog or our annual catalog that will come out in May. Um, you get those five packs of designer series papers for absolutely free. And that's worth $100 worth of designer series paper. It's 200 sheets of six by six designer series paper in all of our color ranges. The only one that's not included is the upcoming in color color range, which will be the new one um, that'll be released with the new annual catalog in May. That's the only one that's not included. All the other ones are included. So that is a whole stack of beautiful designer series paper for free when you purchase the starter kit. So if you would like more information about that, certainly let me know because I'd love to tell you more about that. Um, and when you join my team, there is absolutely no pressure to sell. You can just purchase the products for yourself and your own crafting hobby and enjoy that lovely discount. Um, and who doesn't love a discount, right? <laughs> and it starts, the discount starts at 20% and then you can actually build that up to 25% as well over time. So, um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator already that you're working with and you would like a copy of these catalogs and you're in Australia, let me know because I'd love to send them out to you. Um, I have got um, quite a few spare catalogs. I've sent out um, some already to my current customers and um, they've already been receiving those. So they've been enjoying browsing those catalogs. And um, But yes, I would love to. I've got more catalogs available. So let me know if you would like one and I'd be happy to send one out to you. Okay, so... Um, in saying that today we are going to be playing with some brand new products but I've, I've got quite a few new products I haven't shown you yet and I'm going to be showing them over the next few weeks. Um, one of the products though that I do want to share with you today is one of those free celebration items. Now because these catalog, the catalog, the mini catalog and the celebration hasn't gone live yet, I can't show you the inside of those catalogs just yet. But after the 5th of January, I'll be able to show you the inside. But currently, I can show you the actual products. So I have one, one more of the products I showed some last week. So if you missed it, feel free to go back and find my video from last Monday. So that would have been, the I think it was the 21st. Um, check out my video from the 21st of December. And you'll be able to see some of those brand new products um, that are coming out. Now I've got another new celebration product to show you today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera down and show you that. 
Then I'm going to show you what we're going to be making today, which is using some of the new products from the um, upcoming mini catalog, the January to June mini catalog. So I'm super excited by this one. Uh, it's super cute and I can't wait to um, have a play with you all. So does anybody have any questions in regards to um, catalogs or um, celebration or anything like that? or anything else relating to Stampin' Up, I'm happy to answer your questions. So let me know if you do have any questions. And if not, then we will go ahead. Um, now, I, I talked about my online store. When I tip my camera down, you'll be able to see um, the link for my online store um, down on my desktop. I always have that down on my desktop for you. And I have a host code as well. So when you shop with me, if you use my host code and your order is over $50, I'd love to send you a thank you gift. So remember that. Remember that host code whenever you're shopping with me in my online store. And you just pop that in before you get through to the register. There's a little um, spot there underneath where you look at your shopping basket, all the items in your shopping basket or shopping cart. They call it basket or cart. Now I'm not sure. Anyway. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, there's a spot there to put in the host code. So, um, and I will put the link for that under this video as well. All right, so I've got no questions coming through. All good. So I'll cover up the camera for a moment and I'll tip that down onto my desktop and I'll show you these beautiful new celebration products. Then I will show you the mini catalog products that we're gonna be playing with today. All right, just give me one moment and I'll get this all ready for you. Okay. Oh, it's cart. Thanks, V. I always can't remember if it's cart or um, basket because different... I do a lot of shopping online myself and... Um, Different online stores call it different things. And then when I go to use the Stampin' Up! one, I can never remember which it's called. All right. Oh, you know what? I forgot to flip my cameras. Hang on a minute. I did that last week too, didn't I? Wait, let me just see where that is. Um, here. Flip. Flip. Okay. Hopefully, we've got that round the right way now. So I might be up a little bit high, so I might need to bring that camera down. I'll just wait for my iPad to catch up. And I will see where we are at. Move that across. Move that across. Hang on a minute, it's gonna bump for a minute. There we go. And how is that looking? Takes me just a moment to get this all straight and set up. Alrighty. Move that up a little bit and hopefully we've got that in the right spot now. It's just a little bit fiddly, up a little bit higher and we are just about ready to go. All right, so let's pop our celebration brochure there and um, so I can see where I can need to place this mat. It's still very low. I think I haven't got my camera out as far today. That's why I have to keep moving my mat up so that you can see. There we go, that's better. Okay, so celebration from the 5th of February to the 28th of, uh, sorry, 5th of January to the 28th of February, 2021. Now, as I mentioned, um, my online store can be found via my blog. So if you go to my blog, which is Mandy's Papercraft Creations.blogspot.com, and up on the top left hand side, you will see a shop button. So you just click on that shop button and it takes you straight through to my online store. You can have a look around, have a browse around. And then if there's anything you like there, you can even um, pop it in your cart. There's also a wish list function as well. You can pop things on your wish list to save them there for um, next time when you come back to my online store. So you don't have to purchase them straight away, but you can just add them to your wish list so that you don't forget which items you were interested in. This is my current host code for December. Um, that changes every month and I always have that 
on my blog as well on the right hand side down on the right hand column you'll always find my current um, host code on my blog so remember to use that host code when you're shopping with me so that I can um, send you a thank you gift hey Chitska great to see you thanks for joining me all right so celebration as I was mentioning with every $90 purchase during celebration now that's $90 purchased from any of the catalogs um, any of the current catalogs so the annual catalog the mini catalog or the beginner brochure um, when your sales go up to $90 or above $90 or for every $90 you can choose a free item from the celebration brochure so this is one that is available so this is the paper blooms designer series paper now i haven't even opened this and had a look at this yet so we're going to open that together let me open it from this corner so i haven't even i've only seen the images in the brochure but you know when you see the images in the brochure or in the catalog um, they are never as good as seeing them in real life so let's just if i just get my little paper snips in there and snip this open there we go and we'll take out these beautiful papers and have a look to see now i got these ones for free as stampin up demonstrators we have a pre-order um time before every catalog goes live which is one of the benefits of being a stampin up demonstrator we get to see the catalogs early we get to order the products early and um so that's one of the the perks of being a demonstrator so not only that but because we have celebration coming up we're able to earn celebration items early so i have already earned quite a few celebration items and this is one of them so i wanted to share this with you so this is beautiful paper now each sheet is double-sided so i'll flip them over so you can see the opposite side as well so you get two sheets of each um, paper and they are really beautiful designs look at these so pretty i love these colors together too wait let's have a look and see did you know that each paper pack that you get has the coordinating colors written on it as well so this one has night of navy old olive petal pink rococo rose seaside spray soft sea foam and whisper white it's got quite a few different colors in this um, paper this is really pretty paper isn't it beautiful and the best thing is it's free we've got some stripes going on there really awesome oh this one's a pretty one pink pink is my favorite color for anyone that didn't know um, so anything that's pink I love that's really pretty and let's see what's on the other side of that one. Oh, some nice blue paper Oh, Tina Marie, I bet you like that one. I know that Tina Marie's favourite colour is blue. Oh, we've got some awesome circles. Look at these ones. Wow, look at that. That is so cool. Love that paper. All right, let's see what's on the other side of that one. Oh, some more blue. Awesome. Then we've got this one wow that's pretty look at that so lovely i love all those colors together too they go so well and let's see what's on the other side of that one. Oh, some nice greenery always great for backgrounds oops put it up that way how are we going we're running out of space on the desk then we've got this one oh this one reminds me of a paper i had many many years ago before i was with stampin up reminds me of a paper that i had back then quite similar similar but different i think it maybe is the colors and let's see what's on the other side of that one. Oh, some more green love it very beautiful oh you do love it tina marie it's pretty isn't it so pretty so there you go there is that paper pack so that's the power uh, sorry the paper blooms um, designer series paper that's one of the free packs that you can choose um, 
with celebration so in in the celebration brochure there are designer series papers um, and there are stamp sets as well so there's lots of different things to choose from in that celebration brochure um, there's a whole heap of different paper packs as well not just this one there's some other ones as well you might even see if I show you that cover again you might even see here um, on the cover there's some other papers that you can get a little bit of a snippet of as well these ones I actually showed a couple of weeks ago and these ones the ombre ones I showed last week as well and then there's these ones as well which are the strawberry ones which I haven't shown yet but I have those as well and you can get a little glimpse of some of the stamp sets here too but there's more than that in the catalog or in the brochure sorry there's actually more products than that. That's just a little bit of a, um, a glimpse of some of the products. So have a look on the back. Oh, look, the back as well. It shows you some more items there as well. So this one's got some coordinating items as well. This one's not from this catalogue. This one's from the mini catalogue, but it's showing you a little bit of a glimpse there. So lots and lots of lovely things that you can earn for free during celebration. So if you haven't already got the 5th of January marked on your calendar, mark it on your calendar as the launch of the mini catalogue and also of celebration. And so then um, you'll be ready to go and ready to jump into my online store on the 5th of January. Now, if you don't want to wait until the 5th of January, even though it's not far away, but if you would love to get all of these products now, let me know because there is an option for you to join Stampin' Up! now and um, get these products now. However, if you do that, if you do join Stampin' Up! now, um, it'll, it's still the same, the same price to, for that starter kit. But if you joined now, you wouldn't get those five free packs of designer series paper that I mentioned earlier. The 6x6 six six, um, color range designer series paper. Um, they're only available from the 5th of January um, but you can purchase them as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator so um, it's totally up to you um, and Tina Marie says these flowers remind you of your Nana's aprons oh beautiful that's so special they would be great for scrapbooking as well Tina Marie um, perhaps you've got some old photos of your Nana in her aprons. They would be great for scrapbooking some of those photos too. All right, so that was just one little highlight I wanted to show, share with you of Celebration, but today we're going to be using some products from the mini catalogue. Please excuse my crumpled catalogue. I've done that today when I've had the pages turned over. Um, but I can't show you the inside again yet, but I can show you the products. So, I'll show you what we're going to be playing with. We are playing with the Snail Mail Suite. Now, this is ultra, ultra cute. This is the Snailed It stamp set from the Snail Mail Suite. It is so super cute. And these images really remind me of Smurfs. So if any of you remember Smurfs from back in the, uh, I think it was late 70s, early 80s, um, they had the little mushrooms and, you know, of course, the little Smurfs. But I still have my collection of Smurfs, believe it or not. I used to um, collect them as collectibles and I used to have a little scene set up. But I had the little mushroom houses. I had a little snail who was pulling along a little... Um, um, a little cart they used to put things in the cart and all sorts of things I actually kept them I kept them for my kids my kids used to play with them and now I'm holding on to them for hopefully one day my grandchildren um, so super super cute now there are dies that go with this as well so we have the snail dies and this is them here. Now I've put mine onto magnetic sheets already because we we're going to be using them today. So I knew that this was a set that was going to get a lot of use from me. So I put them already on some magnetic sheets, which I just purchased from um, uh, eBay. And then I just cut them down to size that I need. But um, each of the snails um, is able to be cut out with the dies. The mushrooms are able to be cut out with the dies. Then we have this adorable little 
um, envelope. We're going to be using that today and a little letter as well. So cute, so adorable. Then we've got additional little mushrooms here. The little envelope here on this stamp set, the Happy Mail stamp set, can actually be die cut out as well. We've got an extra frame there. And this one here, this one actually coordinates with the postage stamp punch from the annual catalogue, which I don't have, but it is now on my wish list. Um, I thought I'd fulfilled my wish list, but I've added to it now. So I'm going to be popping that in my next order because that coordinates with this one. Um, and what else? Oh, and there's a little speech bubble as well, which um, we have a die for. And then we've got some additional little hearts here as well. So super, super cute. We're going to be using um, a lot of those today. Actually, we're using those ones, that one, that one, that one, those ones, and that one. Oh, no, we're not using that one. We're using this one. So we're using quite a few of the dies today in the project that I have. Oh, they came out in 1979, did they, Tina Marie? Thank you. You got your plush Smurf for your 10th birthday and you still have him. Oh, so cute. I have a Papa Smurf too, a plush Papa Smurf somewhere. Um, I still have him, I'm sure, somewhere. So, yeah, I loved Smurfs. So cute. Um, oh, you've got this one, Fee? Awesome. Great. You haven't had a play with it yet. Oh, well, I hope... Um, that I'll be able to inspire you a little bit today with um, what I create with it. Now, not only that, we also have... So I've taken all the stamps out of there already. I've got them already mounted up on my blocks, ready to go. Um, we also have in that set um, some twine. So we have Snail Mao Twine Combo, and it's basically Baker's Twine. So we've got White and Blushing Bride, which are two fantastic colours. You can never have enough white baker's twine. In fact, when the um, white baker's twine retired um, from the last annual catalogue, we were very sad because we used to use it all the time. So now we've got some back again. So Amber and I are super, super excited. For those of you that don't know, Amber is my daughter. Um, she works as my helper as well um, with my business. So um, we love using the baker's twine. And we've got the gorgeous blushing bride. And of course, it's pink. So I love anything pink. We also have the very adorable little resin hearts in um, real red and white. So they are super adorable. They are already adhesive backed. So you easily need, um, can just take them off and just adhere them to your project. Um, there are 150. So there you go. There's 75 of each color. So they will go a long way. Then we also have the beautiful designer series paper. Now let me move these to the side and I will show you this adorable paper. So it's called the Snail Mail Designer Series Paper. And I already have it all laid out for you. Look at this. How adorable is this paper? So, so cute. I just love it. So super cute. So I've spread out all of the pieces. So you get two pieces of each um, paper um, as usual and they're all double-sided. So let me just, I'll move them over a little bit and spread them out a bit more. So super cute. Now some of the, um, some of the designs in this paper can be die cut with the dies that come in the set. So I'll show you which ones. So the this snail here, he can be cut out with the snail die here. So I love it when the designer series paper fits with the dies and you can easily cut them out. So yes, we do have a stamp for him as well. But if you don't want to use the stamp, if you just want to use the designer series paper, then you can just die cut him out of there. Um, also, too, we have this one here. So this one here. This one die cuts out with this die here. Oops, I'm messing up all my papers now. Oh, my goodness. So this one die cuts out this one here. So all of those ones can be die cut. This big guy here, um, he doesn't have a die, but he would easily be able to be um, fussy cut or hand cut out with your... Um, fine tip paper snips 
and I think I don't think the mushrooms cut out we've got tiny mushrooms and then we've got giant mushrooms but the mushrooms don't they be easily um, hand cut or fussy cut because they're an easy um, shape to to cut out um, so yeah so how fun are these papers what do you think do you love them wait until you see what I'm gonna do with them today super cute project I love this one too I love the um, colors in the background so the colors in this one in this paper are um, basic gray Bermuda Bay blushing bright daffodil delight real red and whisper white so we've got quite a few um, color combos in there and you've got some more um, plain backgrounds as well if you don't like the real busy backgrounds there's some more plain backgrounds too um, even the hearts like the hearts you could use for Valentine's Day as well even this little snail you could use that for Valentine's Day cards because he's got a little heart on his back um, and oh also too these little letters they can be die cut out with the little letter um, die the little envelope die they can fit around those and cut out those little letters or those little envelopes which is super cute um, yeah so that is the paper really really cute love look how cute these little mushrooms are aren't they adorable and all of these um, sentiments in the speech bubble they also cut out with the dies as well I forgot to tell you that so they will the die will fit around those um, speech bubbles so you can cut all of those out as well if you want to and they're in the different languages so we've got um, English, uh, French and German. So there we go. So that's the designer series paper. So they're all the products in the suite. Um, oh, so in fact, that whole suite for all of those products, let me just find my code. So that whole suite for all of those products is $121. So if you purchase that suite, then you would automatically be able to choose one of the free items from the Celebration brochure. Um, so if you love that suite, then put that one on your wish list for um, 5th of January. It's called the Snail Mail Suite. Um, I'll give you the item code as well. Just so if you want to write this down for the 5th of January when it goes live. The item code is 155986 and it's $121 for all of those products, which is awesome because you get the stamp set, the dies, the embellishments, um, the twine, the, the combo twine pack, and you also get the um, designer series paper as well. All right, so let me show you um, what we're going to be making today. Now, I'm also incorporating today, I'm bringing in my most used dies, which are the rectangle stitch framelit die, or rectangle stitch dies. Sorry, we don't have framelits in the name anymore. Um, and I am going to be using the, well, the middle size one, actually. It's the fourth small, uh, the fourth largest die. We're going to be using that one today as well. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've prepared a few things for you. Um, first of all, what I did is, um, let me just pull out all of my bits here. So I've gone ahead and I've cut some of the um, pieces and I've already pre-stamped some as well, but we're going to start from scratch and um, do those again. But I just pre-stamped some so that I had time for the ink to dry so that um, uh, I'd be able to colour with my Stampin' Blends. So we're going to be making a shaker card today. Now, I haven't made a shaker card for many, many, many years. Um, so this will be my first shaker card in a very, very long time. So I am super excited to be doing that with you today. Uh, let me just find my other piece that I was using. Yep, okay. All right, so we have got, let's pop that back in there for the moment. All right, so we ha are starting with um, a piece of Bermuda Bay for our base. 
Um, so this measures at 14.85 by 21 centimeters and we have scored and folded that um, at 10.5 centimeters. Now we're going to be doing a landscape card or horizontal card today. Okay, so that's going to be our card base. Beautiful, bright, vibrant, fun, fun color. Now remember when you fold your card to always burnish your fold with your bone folder to make that sit down nice and flat. Well, flat-ish. This one wants to keep popping up because this is a very thick piece of cardstock, this color. All right, so then we're going to be using some of our designer series paper. So I have pulled out two um, coordinating pieces. So I'm using the very, very cute um, mushrooms as well as a Bermuda Bay piece which has these squiggly lines all over it. You're also going to need some window sheet, some Stampin' Up! window sheet. Now I have already cut my piece down ready, so you probably can't see that. Maybe if I pop it on here you'll be able to see that. So I've already cut that down to size and I'll give you all the measurements which I actually haven't had written down today. So I'm going to have to re-measure for you. And I just pulled out a whole heap of scraps of my Whisper White. Um, to stamp all the different images onto. Um, so I've gone ahead and stamped a whole heap of those, but we'll do it again together. All right, so um, then you're also going to need some, and again, I've pulled out just scraps. You're going to need some Blushing Bride, some, where's my other piece? Some Pool Party. Okay, you're also going to need some Daffodil Delight and some Real Red. And again, these are just all scraps out of my scrap bin and some more Bermuda Bay. All right, so these are all the colors that we're using. Oh, and of course, Whisper White. So these are all the, the gorgeous colors. How fun do they all look together? So, so fun. So, um, oh, you have the punch too, Fee. I just saw your comment. The um, envelope punch, fantastic. That's great. It coordinates really well with this um, suite. So that's great that you already have it. So these are the colors that you'll need, and we're only going to be using little bits and pieces of each of these. Um, the one that you'll need the most of probably is the white and the um, Daffodil Delight because we're going to be, I'll show you what we're going to be doing with those. Okay, so let me give you some measurements of these ones. Now, I can't remember the measurements. Oh, I remember this one. This one was 14.2 um, centimetres um, by 9.9 .9 centimetres. And as I said to you, I used that, rect that stitched rectangle die. And I simply just lined that up square in the middle. And I die cut the um, middle out of that piece. So now I'll just pop that out. So now I can put that piece aside and use that on another project. Or I might want to use the other side that has the, um, the speech bubbles. Okay. So that's as easy as that one is. So I've already done, gone ahead and done that one ahead of time. Again, just so to remind you, I've used the fourth largest rectangle die. Okay. So I'm not going to do that step of the process again because I've already done that. There's no point in me doing that again. Okay. Oops. I nearly put aside my, my um, snail dies, but we need those, so I don't want to put those aside. Okay. So then with the um, Bermuda Bay piece, let me just, I forget the measurements that I use for that. Let me re-measure that. So that's 14 centimetres by 10.7, 14 by 10.7. I actually just took two millimeters off um, this size. Okay, so that's just a little bit smaller. So if I turn that over, it would be a bit hard to see. Let me turn it this way. If I turn that over, you'll see it's just a smidge smaller than, a smidge smaller than the um, mushroom piece. I can line it up properly there it's just a smidge smaller just it's just a millimeter smaller on each side okay then with our window sheet piece I've cut that at let me measure this again 14 centimeters 
by 9.5 centimeters okay so this one is 14 by 9.5 i should really write this down because i know somebody's going to ask me again <laughs> and i'm going to say oh hang on a minute i'll have to remeasure that let me just write it down i should have written it down as i was doing it but i was um 14 by 9.5 there we go um yes i was doing it um so, sort of was designing it as i was going through the um i was cutting it as i was designing so kind of doing that process and yeah not really measuring things as i went okay so we need that all right so let's just pop those aside for the moment those pieces and we'll go ahead and we'll prepare some of the other pieces as well all right so first of all let's stamp our snail that's um really important because we want that ink to dry before we color that now the ink pads that i'm using today are again in those coordinating colors and i've just added a couple um so i've got daffodil delight pool party bermuda bay real red blushing bride and basic gray so i've pulled in um the pool party which isn't part of the suite but coordinates really well with that my blushing bride label has faded so please don't take any notice of the color on that one but it actually more looks like that and my pool party um, i had to bring out my old pool party ink luckily i had kept it because my um current one i hadn't used for a very long time because pool party is not one i typically use very frequently and it had actually dried out so much and i hadn't re-inked it that um it was actually it completely dried out um in the center obviously which is where i've used it the most um and the pad had started to crack and i couldn't re um, moisten it so there's a tip for you and i'm going to need to do that myself is pull out every single one of my stamp pads because i have all of the colors so that's a lot of ink i've got to pull out every one of those stamp pads now and go through and double check them to make sure that none of them are starting to dry out and if they do make sure you have the reinkers or purchase the reinkers that coordinate with that color and just um, give them a bit of a hit with um, some of that reinker ink to um to ink them back up again good idea just to test each one as well with a stamp to see if they need if they're getting a bit dry they need a bit more ink um but that was a lesson learned so now i need to buy a new um a new pool party ink so there's a little tip for you for something that i learned this week through fault of my own i won't say no fault of my own because it was actually my fault i should have checked it sooner okay so they're the colors and we're going to be using some stamp and blends today too so I have pulled out a whole heap of colors of Stampin' Blends. So I have got Light Real Red. I've got Light Flirty Flamingo because we don't have a Blushing Bride um, Stampin' Blend. So I've pulled out the Light Flirty Flamingo. We have got the Light and Dark Bermuda Bay. Whoops, there we go. Light and Dark Bermuda Bay. So the, these Stampin' Blends, they come in a combo now anyway of the light and dark. So when you order them, you'll get both. Unless you go to the clearance rack at the moment and see if there are any individuals left. There were some individual colors that were left um, in either the light or the dark. Um, that's They were leftovers from when um, Stampin' Up! did sell them in individual um, uh, pair, like as an individual pen. Now they just come as a combo um so yeah so go to the clearance rack and have a look if any of these colors are there and you don't have them so i'm using light smoky slate rather than the um basic gray then i've got light pool party and i've got light and dark in the daffodil delight okay so they're all the colors that i'm using so lots and lots of beautiful bright colors today lots of fun okay um which measurement do you need, Tina Marie? And do you really, or are you just testing me? <laughs> I can I can give them to you. I only wrote down the window sheet, but I can give you the other ones if you need them. Um, I just would have to. I know, I know the pink. I know this one. This one is fourteen point two by nine point nine. I know that one off the top of my head. And this one, I think, was a millimeter, uh, two millimeters smaller. Fourteen. 14 centimeters by 9.7 
and the window sheet I did write down, which was 14 by 9.5. So there you go. There's all your measurements. <laughs> and the base, you all know what size to cut your base, hopefully by now. Um, if not, ask me and I can tell you again. Loving all these colors, Amanda? Yes, they're so fun, aren't they? All right, let's stamp our little snail. So we're gonna be doing all of our stamping in basic gray today. So basic gray is um, fantastic color to stamp with. It's not as heavy as your, um, your black, so your memento um, or your um, stays on. Now, of course, if you're using stamp and blends as we are today for any of your for your coloring you would need to use a memento black if you're not using the gray but what i love with the basic gray i'm going to stamp him down here what i love with the basic gray how cute is he um is as it dries it actually lightens so you get like a, a nice deep gray but it's not heavy like a black um so i really like that about this one all right so um so that's all we're doing with the basic gray actually for this one i stamped a whole heap of other ones let me show you this is one that we're not using today but it's super super cute look at this little one how cute is that so cute those little mushrooms they remind me of the smurf so much and because the little smurf mushroom houses they had the spots on them like that too super cute but we're not i decided not to use this one today but i'm keeping it for another project so super cute all right, so let's pop that one away and I'll just bring in my scrap paper to stamp off my, I, I like to stamp off as much ink as I can off my stamp before I take it to my chamois and that way then my chamois doesn't get as inky. So we'll just give that a little clean, make sure we get all that grey off just in case we use a lighter colour later, we don't want to take that to the lighter colors there we go good okay so we're going to um let that dry now also too what we're going to do is we're going to make this cute little letter in this cute little envelope how adorable is this little guy so i'm going to show you how to make that but while we've got our white out we'll make the little letter that goes in there how do I clean the chamois? So um, Kathleen, with the chamois, the chamois just, it's, it's like a car chamois, but it's much thicker. Um, so what you do is you just rinse it until it, till the water runs clean under um, the tap, under the cold tap or warm tap. Um, and you just keep it moist all the time. It's good to give it a bit of an airing every so often so it doesn't get any mold. Um, but I'm constantly opening and closing mine um, on a daily basis pretty much. So mine gets a lot of air. It will stain up, but it doesn't affect the cleaning quality of the chamois. So long as you rinse it out, I do mine about once a week and I rinse it out to get rid of any of that additional ink that's just sitting there um, within the chamois. Um, and then it's good to go and good to clean again. So yeah, they last for a really, really long time if you take care of them. If they do start to dry out, they come, become a bit dry and crispy. Actually, I've probably got one I can show you. Um, let me see. Do I have a dried out one? I think because I've got quite a few. No, that one's moist too. This one might be a dry one. I've got quite a few. Oh, no, this one's moist as well. We've got three chamois running at the moment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But with this one... It's starting to get a little bit dry on the edges. So when they dry out, they become really hard. And what you need to do is when they become really hard like that is just soak them in some water until they absorb that water and they become soft again. Yeah, but this one is starting to dry out on the edges. So um, I, do, I do usually just have one or two running at a time. Not normally three, but my daughter and I have both been using them. So... So they're very easy to look after. Okay, so we're going to stamp our little envelope. So what I'm going to do first is we are going to die cut our little envelope. So we want to use the little envelope die from here. So, uh, sorry, the little letter die that fits within that envelope. And we're going to do that envelope in a moment as well. Now I'm going to be using my adorable little 
mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine today. It's so cute. I used it for the first time last night. I did, I did get it a couple of weeks ago, but I hadn't actually had a play with it yet. And all of the plates were still in their plastic. I hadn't even opened them. So we are going to use this today. And look how much easier this fits on camera rather than my big one. I love my big one. Um, and it's really handy for when you're doing a lot of cutting. But for just doing small cuts and for demonstrating on camera, this little mini is perfect. All right. So let me grab my plates. So my, your plates come in packaged like this. Now, this little uh, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine is going to be available to customers from the 5th of January as well. Um, so when Stampin' Up! Um, releases the mini catalog and celebration, this one will be available as well. So you get in there your plates. So you've got your base plate, which we'll be using today. My two clear plates. You can see I've been cutting. See all these little letters I've been cutting. So we're using that one. And we've got two different plates that we use with our mini embossing folders. So there's different thicknesses. Some are 3D and some are just your standard um, embossing folders. So there's two thicknesses there, depending on which um, embossing folder you're using. And all the instructions are here on your plates for you. Okay. And it tells you which number plate you need and each of the plates are numbered. So really easy to use. Okay, so let's cut our little envelope. So I'm just going to pop um, our little, actually what I'm going to do is I'll cut, I'll just cut this off here, cut my little snail there, set him to the side. Oh, I'll give you a tip actually too, with the machine before I go ahead. This is something that I learned the other day. So some people had said that they were having trouble with the machine grabbing their plates. So Stampin' Up! Um, let us know just the other day that the reason that is, is because each of these plates, are, they have a beveled edge. And that's so that the rollers can actually grip onto those plates as it's feeding through. What happens is if people are putting them all together and lining them up completely like that. It forms like a square at the top there. And then that's when the machine sometimes has trouble in grabbing them because it doesn't have that, it takes away that beveled edge. So all you need to do is just slip them back a little bit like that so that they're tapered, so that you form that beveled edge again. Also too, when you're putting your dies and your cardstock in there, don't have it right up to the edge. Just have it back a little bit from the edge because again, if you put your dies up to the edge and your cardstock, it's lifting that plate up and it's again causing that, um, that higher um, spot at the end there and it makes it harder for the rollers to grab it. So there's just a couple of little tips for you for using your um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's the same with both, um, more so with the little one because it is much smaller and so it has a, a smaller um, feeding mouth. So, all right, so we're gonna pop this die down, our little letter die. Now, because it has straight edges, it's always a good idea to put any die that has straight edges like that at a little bit of an angle when you're putting it down. So it feeds through a lot better and it doesn't get caught on the rollers and cause that um, speed bump as it's going through. So we'll just stagger those plates ever so slightly. It doesn't need to be a huge stagger, but then we, start feeding that through so we put a little bit of pressure on those plates to help that through as we crank that handle now it does have rubber feet on it but because i'm actually using it on paper it's um not adhering to the paper but it does have rubber feet that help it stay in place on a um, smooth surface okay so there we've got our little letter so we'll pop that out on the back of the die there's little um punching holes so if you just punch, you uh, put your take your pick tool in there, in those little holes, then you'll be able to take that out. And we're going to stamp on that one. Now while we've got our machine, let's die cut our envelope. So our envelope is um, the one that we're going to die cut in our um, Daffodil Delight. I went blank then for a moment. So we'll pop that in. So we pop, 
We've got our base plate on. We've got our clear number two plate on. We're going to put our cardstock on and then our die. And then we put another number two plate over the top. Oop. Okay. So then we're going to feed that through again. Crank our little handle. This little mini is great for traveling as well. Great for um, if you go to um, crops or classes and you like to take your own machine. Um, this is a great um, little machine to be able to just take with you. It's really light as well. Um, so really easy to carry. All right, this is our little envelope. I'm going to show you how to put that one together in a moment. Okay. Um, we'll pop that one to the side. Now, we're also going to need some... We're going to be making a shaker card, as I said. So we also need some little mushrooms in some different colours. Now, I've gone ahead and die cut some of these, but I'll do a couple just to show you. And also, too, let's take that one out. We won't be using that one. Also, too, we want some of the little letters, which I didn't stamp yet, which I forgot. So let me just move this. We'll come back to these ones because I want to stamp the other. I want to stamp the other one for you. So we're going to stamp these. Um, we want these little letters as well. These are going to be in our... What is a crop? Oh, a crop is where you go... Um, it's like a like a scrapbooking day where you might go and just make a whole heap of um, scrapbooking layouts or you might have like a craft afternoon, like a card making afternoon. Um, yeah, so that's usually what, what we term as a crop is when you're going um, and just, you know, having a play with all your beautiful products. <laughs> Hi, Megan. How are you going? Thank you, Megan, for your beautiful cards. They were so lovely and so thoughtful. Thank you so much for those. All right, so this little envelope comes from this stamp set here. Oh, this, sorry, this stamp here, Happy Mail Enclosed. So we just want the little envelope from that. So I'm going to stamp that in Bermuda Bay. So we don't need to stamp the whole stamp. You can if you want to, but you don't need to because we only need the little envelope. There we go. So just let that dry for a moment. I'll give that a little clean. Got things going on everywhere here. There we go. Okay, we'll give that one a little clean. All right, so all we want to do is die cut that little tiny envelope. Now, we will have to die cut our snail as well, um, but we're going to color him first. And then we're going to die cut some of these cute little mushrooms. Now, in the set, in the die set, we have two little mushrooms, so we can die cut two of those at a time. And then we want the little, em um, the little envelope die as well. So we'll bring in our little stamp and cut and emboss machine again. And our plates, the same as before. So when you're die cutting with your plates, it's a good idea to flip them over as well when you're cutting. Just so you're not always cutting on the same surface, it helps to eliminate um, or minimise at least the warping um, of the plates. They do warp over time because they are a consumable item. Um, so yeah, so they will get a little bit of warping over time. But if you keep flipping your plates, they will last a lot longer. All right, so I'm going to get out a scrap of... Oh, we need some hearts too. We also need some hearts in the different colours. So we'll pull out our heart dies as well. So we want... Let's just cut... Just cut a strip of that one. We'll cut a strip of Blushing Bride. Cut a strip of... Oh, we can only do two at a time. Yes, okay. All right, so I'll pop those on. So we've got our pool party and our blushing bride. So let's do a heart and a mushroom in each of those. And a heart and a mushroom. 
and then we'll pop this one on as well whoops let's just get rid of that extra cardstock there whoopsie we'll pop that one on there as well and we're just going to put the die over that little envelope so we make sure which way does it go up that way there we go now if you're worried about that staying in place you can use a little bit of washi tape i've just got some old washi tape here um oh thanks megan yeah thank you yes i am well thank you all right so we're just going to put a little bit of washi tape around that die just to hold that in place to die cut that little um, envelope with these we don't need washi tape because we're just cutting that out of um, the solid color of cardstock but with this one we're actually die cutting a um, stamped image so we want to make sure that um, that die stays there on that stamped image all right so then we're going to put our top plate on and we're just going to roll that through feed that through it's going to be a little bit slower and tighter this time because we're cutting a lot of dies at once there we go and we'll take these ones off and I will show you so I'll pop this out and see look we've got a cute little letter and with these ones oops okay so we'll get rid of those ones be careful that you don't lose any of these little dies put them straight back onto your um, die sheet straight away so you don't lose them okay and then we've got our cute little hearts here so we'll take these dies off and these ones have got the cardstock still stuck in them I'll show you those how to get that out so there's our little hearts okay and with these bits I'm just going to use my take a pick tool and again we've got those little holes in there that we can just poke those those um, pieces of cardstock out and then the additional bits that are in that little mushroom we just poke them out there we go we'll do the same with this one there we go and then we just poke out all those extra bits there we go all right so that's how we die cut those now if you've got any little pieces of cardstock left on your plates make sure you take those off because otherwise what will happen is when you run your next piece of cardstock through they'll actually cause a bit of a, an indentation or a bit of embossing on your next piece so make sure you clear any excess pieces of cardstock off your plates okay so that's what I did with all of my little pieces okay and I created this so I sat last night and I did a whole heap of these so as you can see look this is all, this is going to be all of my confetti in my shaker cards now let me just put my dies back away because they're very tiny and I don't want to lose them let's just pop them back on the sheet there we go yeah so just to save a bit of time I went ahead and I did a whole heap of these in all the different colors all the different coordinating colors that I showed you before um, to make the shakers now I probably won't use all of these but I just did oodles of them just to make sure that I had plenty and in case I wanted to do a second one then I've got all of the bits okay so how cool is that it's gonna make such fun confetti hey so so cute and adorable in all of those beautiful colors it's gonna make sure they're all up the right way okay so we're gonna use those as our confetti for our shaker card so let's pop them back into our little dish for the moment now let's get back to coloring our snail and we also need to um, stamp on our um, little letter so we're going to be using the little heart stamp and the little hello sentiment and I'm going to be using blushing bride and real red for that so we'll do that first before we color our little snail we'll do that coloring bit last so we'll open up these ones we've got the real red and the blushing bride and I'm just going to stamp some blushing bride hearts first and you can stamp them however you like on your little envelope 
doesn't really matter they can be stamped in any way that you like oh I did a little smudgy on that one but that's okay because that corner is going to be hidden anyway so I'm not going to panic about that um, I could re recut that and do it again but it won't matter because that bit will probably be hidden all right and then what I'm going to do so that'll lighten up a little bit as it dries let me move that up so you can see it so super tiny and then with the hello in the real red, I'm just going to stamp that over the top of those hearts in the middle of that letter. There we go, just like so. Okay, I'll give those a clean again with the chamois. Stamp off that excess ink. There we go, give them a bit of a clean. And the same with the heart. There we go. Good. All right, so we've got our little um, letter. We're going to make our little envelope as well. Then we're going to color our snail. So with the little envelope, you can see that it's die cut and it's actually put some embossed um, lines on the envelope there too. Hopefully you can see that in the light. So we're going to flip that over upside down. And we're going to fold in the edges first. So fold in each of those edges. And as I do that, I'm going to burnish those fold lines with my um, bone folder. Then, now the top and the bottom, if you flip them over, you'll notice that one is slightly larger than the other. And I had to show my daughter Amber this several times. And I said to her, have a close look. They're different. And she's like, no, they're not. They're the same. I'm like, yeah, no, they're not. They're different. So this one is quite a, a little bit longer. This peak is a little bit longer than this one. It's a little bit shorter. So this longer peak is going to be the bottom part of the envelope. And the top smaller peak is the, is the um, top of the envelope. Probably doesn't really matter. But this is going by what it had in the catalog so that's how I've um, done it I've done it both ways but I did find too that this did look better so before I fold up before I adhere it all I'm going to fold up the bottom bottom flap and just burnish that first then I'll put it all together so I'm going to use some glue dots I love these mini envelopes they're so adorable so I'm just going to fold that in I'm going to pop a little glue dot here and then fold the other side in then I'm going to pop another glue dot on that side and then I'm going to fold the bottom flap up and there we have our cute little envelope now I'm going to leave my little envelope open because I'm going to pop my little letter into the envelope like so and you can see that bit of the heart where I smudged it is covered up and I'm just going to pop a little glue dot under that to hold that in place super super cute just one glue dot that's all we need just to hold that in place and we want that sort of coming out oh go back, go back in a little bit more Want that sort of coming up at a bit of an angle like so there we go all right now what we're going to do is we are going to wrap a little bit of twine like this around the envelope and then we're going to put a cute little heart on there too so where did I pop my twine there it is so my so I'm going to use the white baker's twine and there's no measurement in this people so don't ask me what the measurement is on this one because I haven't measured this bit so I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times just wrapping it around and then we're going to just snip that off oops and we're going to tie a bow well i'll tie a knot first and then i'll tie a bow so this is always tricky doing this on camera and i say it every time as a bit of a disclaimer because sometimes it works well and other times not so well so hang on i've gone the wrong way let's go this way that's it all right so you can always put a little glue dot underneath your your um your knot there on your twine to hold it in place as you tie your bow, which sometimes I end up doing, but it depends. I give it a go first and see if I need it, and I 
think I got away with it this time. So we own, it's only a little letter, so we only want a little bow. Let's see if we can get that in the middle. Jiggle that over. Come on, move over. There we go. There we go. And we'll just tighten up that a little bit. How super cute is that? And then I'll trim the ends up when we get it onto the card and I see um, the length that I need. So how cute is that? I just love this. It's so adorable. Now we need to put one of our little hearts. So we're going to use one of our little resin hearts, a little red one. There we go. And we just pop. It's great that these have already got the glue dots on the back of them as well. I'm just going to pop a little heart over here. Add a little bit of an angle. There we go. There's our cute little envelope to go on the front of our card. Okay, so this card, this this card is definitely um, an advanced card. So if you are a new stamper, um, this one is one to work towards because it has got quite a lot of um, different elements to it and quite a lot of different steps as well. So um, it's certainly not a beginner. Um, card but of course all of the stamp sets can be used to make um, quick and easy designs as well all right let's color our cute little snail um, now somewhere here where did my little packet go somewhore here I had one. Oh no I've already tipped him out of the packet ah oh, where did it go where did it go I've got so many little scraps here beside me there it is there we go okay so we're going to use the um, pool party the light pool party for the snail's body and I'm just going to use the bullet tip to do the um, antennae and then, oh, do you use a stamp and mist spray much to clean your stamps? Yes, I do, Glenda. Um, when I usually when I finish stamping, uh, if I've had a stamping session or I've held a class, um, I usually give them a good clean with the stamp and mist and the um, stamp and scrub to give them a really good clean, especially with the photopolymer stamps. More so with the photopolymer, the red rubber stamps usually clean up pretty well. Um, the photopolymer stamps stain up a bit more, so they usually need a deeper clean. But yes, I do use that um, quite often as well. But the chamois is good for a quick clean. All right, so I'm just going to go back over those again. There we go. So cute. Um, now I'll do his shell. I'm going to do his shell in, I'm going to outline it in the dark Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to go around all of the shell and then each of those lines. Oh, I can hear the rain. I wonder if you can all hear it coming in on the window. I'm wondering if it's going to hail. They're big spots of rain. All right, and then we're going to go just on the inside of his shell just to add a little bit of tone in there there we go then I'll come in with the light daffodil delight and I'm going to use the brush tip now and I'm just going to use a circular motion I just want to soften the edge where I've put that dark down I just want to soften that a little bit so it's not too harsh but I want to keep the deeper lines um, the stripes on his shell so I won't go over them as much but just these bits I'll keep turning him around how cute is he so cute I wish I had I'm, I'm gonna go hunting for my Smurfs now and find my little um snail that I used to have I think they might be under my daughter's bed in the basket I had a special Smurf basket for them I think that's where they are I think I'm gonna have to get it and maybe I'll do another card in the colors of the Smurfs <laughs> with my little Smurf snail there we go 
Okay. Oh, you can't hear the rain, Megan? Um, oh, you had to cool off in the pool. Is it hot up there today? We had a hot one yesterday, actually. It was really hot yesterday here, but uh, a little bit cooler. It was muggy this morning, but a little bit cooler this afternoon. All right, so I'm going to leave this present white, but the top present I'm going to make pink. So I'm using the Light Fleur de Flamingo for that one because we don't have a blushing bride. Um, I wish they would bring in a blushing bride um, uh, stamp and blend, actually. But maybe it would be too light. I don't know. All right, now with the little spots on his belly, we're going to use the Light Bermuda Bay. I'm just going to use the bullet tip to go over those little spots on his belly. You could just leave them black if you want to, but I wanted to highlight them because they're super cute. There we go. And then I'm going to do a red ribbon. So I'm using the light real red. And I'm going to go over the ribbon. Ribbon and all the way down. There we go. So that's all the colouring that we're going to do on him or her, him or her, our snail. <laughs> and then we're going to die cut that with our little snail die. So that's this one here. So we'll pop that down on our mini. Now this time I do want to use a little bit of washi tape because I want to make sure that this lines up really well and stays put and doesn't slip around. So if you don't have um, washi tape, you might like to use some masking tape or painter's tape. Um, just make sure it's not too, too sticky that it's going to um, tear your cardstock. But what I usually like to try and do is when I put the washi tape down, um, adhere it to your die and then to the outside of the cardstock so that you're not putting it down on your coloured image because if it does happen to tear, then it won't matter so much because it'll be on the outside part that you're not going to use. Well, I'm giving you lots of tips today, <laughs> which is great. I love, I love giving lots of tips to people. All right, so we'll run that through. There we go. There is a little bit of creaking and cracking with the plates. That happens with all of the, um, the um, die cutting machines. So don't worry too much about that. And look at that. We have our cute little snail. How cute and adorable is that? Oh, it's always hot up there, is it, Megan? <laughs> uh, good place to go in the winter then, hey? Somewhere warm. I don't like the cold so much. Mind you, I'm finding the, uh, the heat a bit more unbearable as I'm getting older. But I'm thankful that I have air conditioning. So, <laughs> all right, I'll just pop that back. All righty. So now I think we have... Um, oh, no hail, Tina Marie. It's just going to be rain, is it? Okay, awesome. That's great. All right, so now we've got all of our little pieces... So we've got our little envelope, we've got our snail, we've got our um, confetti and we've got our card pieces already cut. Now I'm going to be using, now as I mentioned, just as a disclaimer, I haven't made a shaker card in many, many, many years. So this is my first one for a long, long time. So I'm going to be actually using today our, our Stampin' Up! Foam Adhesive Strips. I'm going to be using these to um, make sure that all that all of that confetti stays where it needs to stay. Okay. Now these mounting strips they are a little bit higher than our um, dimensionals as well, so um, they give a nice thick dimension. You could also use. Let me just grab them. If you don't have these ones, you can also use the foam adhesive sheets, and you can cut your own strips. Um, but these ones are already pre-cut, so, so the foam adhesive strips are the same height as dimensionals and the foam adhesive strips are that little bit higher. Okay, so it depends on the height of the dimension that you want. Um, I'm going to use these ones today. All right. Oh, here we go. So first things first, we're going to pop this down 
on top of our Bermuda Bay. So we just want to adhere that down. Now I am going to be using um, tear and tape today. How cute is the other side as well? So cute, this paper. So I'm just going to be using my tear and tape for the whole project this time because I want a really strong stick. Because we're making a shaker card, we want to make sure that nothing is going to um, fall apart or come apart or anything like that. You could also use the, um, the Stamp and Seal Plus. Um, I just thought that the tape would be easier when it comes to sticking the, um, the clear window sheet down. Because I'm not sure how the tear and tape would adhere to that. I didn't test it, to be honest. I mean, not the tear and tape. I'm using tear and tape because I wasn't sure about the stamp and seal plus, how that would attach to the um, window sheet. So I just thought I would just um, play it safe and use the tear and tape because I know that that will work well. All right, so I'm just going to line that up first before I take the rest of that tape off. Try and get that centered. That looks okay there, I think. I think I've got that in the right spot. Okay, so take that piece off and the other pieces as well. There we go, the rain's coming back again. There we go. Okay, so that now forms our background. Oops, I dropped a piece of tape backing, that's okay. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to create our window. So we'll just pop that up to the top for a moment. So we're going to need to put our window sheet. So we're turning, I've already die cut that middle um, part out as I showed you earlier with the um, rectangle die. So we're just going to turn that over and we're going to be adhering this to the back. So I'm going to put a couple of strips of, well actually I'll probably just need one strip of well, I might do two let's see how's the the width yeah I might do two strips of um, tear and tape around that window and I want to make sure that it adheres um, that window sheet really well okay so we've got one and two oh here we go so is there, does anybody else make shaker cards i might really love this and want to do more i haven't done one in such a long time as i said it's been a really really long time so before I remove that backing, I'm just going to measure this again to see if I can fit another strip of, yeah, I could fit another strip of tape. Do I need to though, is the question. Do I need to? I might just put an extra piece on these end parts, just to be sure. I've watched lots of videos of people putting together um, window uh sorry shaker cards over the last couple of years actually um so i've seen lots put together recently but yeah i think the ones that i used to do years ago we mainly used like the shaker domes i don't remember if i ever used window sheets to actually create one so um so amanda says i want to have a go might try snail mail but I've been waiting to use Life is Beautiful stamp set. Ah! And Glenda says, um, I've done a few, um, but too many. I get scared pu putting it all together. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like I'm just um, taking a breath. I am feeling a bit hot at the moment, but I don't know if that's just me heating up or if it's actually because I'm feeling nervous to put this together. Okay, so we've got the top bit adhered. So that's all good. All right, let's remove the tape now from the other sides and adhere the window. 
I mean, I guess there's lots of different ways of doing um, shaker cards as well. And I have actually seen a few people making them using our clear envelopes as well, which I thought was a really great idea. Oh, that's just within the... I'm just having a look. I didn't quite stick that straight and it's just within the edge there. But you know what? I'm going to cheat. Nobody's going to see the back. I'm just going to trim off a little bit with my snips just so that it doesn't actually poke out from the edge there. Just to be sure, even though I had cut it precisely, I didn't stick it precisely. There we go. Doesn't matter if that's not straight. Nobody's going to see that bit. All right. And now I'll adhere the other side. So we'll take the rest of that tape off. They are quite fiddly to do, but um, super fun. And when I saw, so when you get your Stampin' Up, uh, your, sorry, your January to June mini catalogue, if you don't already have it, and if you have already got it, you will know, um, there is a shaker card actually in the catalogue using this suite. And that's where I got the idea from it. I've just adapted it a little bit. So this is a cased card. This isn't my direct idea. I've just changed it up a bit. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our window sheet attached. Okay, so that's good. Now, because it's plastic, it's very staticky. So I've noticed that my window has picked up a lot of bits and pieces off my desk. Ugh. So it's... I need an anti-static... Oh, you know what I'm going to use? My glasses cleaner. I have my glasses over there. So I'm going to use my little glasses cleaner to give that a clean and see if that... Okay, so that's one side. Let me just wipe that and then let's see the other side. Give that a clean. That's better. Still a few little bits, but it's better than it was. Yeah, because things just want to stick to it because it's plastic. Okay, so we've got our window. Now, what we want to do is add the foam to the back of this and we need to add our um, bits and pieces on here. So which way will I do it first? I might put the, the confetti on here first because I'm worried I'm going to forget, <laughs> which is quite likely for me. Embossing Buddy, no, I tried that blender and what actually happened was, because I heard people saying that, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll give it a go. So I did use my Embossing Buddy, which is now retired, um, to do that, but it left the white powder on the um, on the plastic, So and I couldn't wipe it back off, so I actually had to ditch that piece of window sheet and start again. So I don't know if I'm missing a step there or something, because um, I have heard people say that, but it actually left the white powder in the window, which then it wasn't clear. So um, I don't know, maybe I'm missing a step there, but that was the first time that I tried it. Is there a tip there for that, Glenda? Have you tried it? Maybe there's a little, a little sneaky tip that I don't know about or something. So I'm popping in a few of these little envelopes. I'm making sure I use all the different colours. Um, oh, you won't use that then, no. Well, you can always give it a try, but test it on a little scrap piece of window sheet first, Glenda, before you use it on your piece you're going to use. Because I have seen people suggest that too, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea, but yeah, it didn't really work for me. So, so I'm just trying to spread these out a little bit, and they are going to mix up when I, um, you know, put all the other bits in. Okay, so I'll do that. Then we'll bring in some of our little cute mushrooms. Mushrooms or toadstools, whatever you would like to call them. We want to kind of keep the scatter sort of in the middle till we get the um, other piece on top. Let's just spread these out a little bit. I'm expecting some of these to probably be a little bit sticky to the, um, to the card front, uh, to the window sheet too. So I'm not sure how it's going to go, but we'll find out. So we don't, I don't want them to all sort of be, I want them all to mix up a little bit. So let's see if we can get them sort of overlapping a little bit. They're probably going to mix themselves up when they get in 
there anyway, I'm guessing. Oops, I'm just going to make sure they're all up the right way. Because when they die cut, um, there is definitely a right side and a wrong side. So you want to make sure they kind of are the right way up. Might put that one on top because that's a deeper colour. Um, oh, Athena does them. As Athena uses the embossing buddy on the edge of the foam adhesive to stop the confetti from sticking to it. Oh, so just around the edge there, Athena, rather than in the middle. Well, that's a good idea. So Athena does shaker cards. There you go. She's got the scoop on how to stop it sticking. All right, what do you think? Do you think that's enough? I think that might be enough. We've got an even, even number of the different elements there. I think that should be right. Now, before I stick that, I just want to see. Oh, yeah, they're all going to stick to that. They're all going to want to stick. See, look at that. That's all right. Okay, so we'll just move them back into the middle a bit closer. I'll spread them out this way a little bit. Whoop. Oh, it's hard trying to get all the colours to uh, mix up. There we go. Okay, so that's ready. So we'll just set that aside for the moment. And now I'll try my strips. Here we go. <gasps> oh, I'm nervous. I have no idea of the time, guys. Don't tell me. <laughs> but I'm expecting that this is um, a very long live. All right, so I'm going to put these just on the inside edge of the um, stitched line there. And I'm going to take them out just past the edge there of... Um, just out past the edge of that window. I'll do the same with the bottom one. There we go. Trim that bit off. Okay. Oh, so stick the foam down and before you take off the backing, run the powder just on the edge. Oh, so along here on the plastic. Okay. Um, oh, just along here, in here, on the inside edge. Oh, I don't know if I've got the dexterity to get that in the right spot. Actually, I'm scared. Okay, so then we'll pop that foam tape down there. We'll trim that bit there. Oops. Here we go, and along here. And cut that there. There we go. All right, so now we've formed our window for our pieces. We've got a little tiny gap there, and I'm just hoping our pieces are fairly big, so they won't go through there. All right, so that's our window, but now I want to make sure that um, that's going to be that's going to sit up nice off the card front. So I'm just going to run an extra piece on all the sides so that it's nice and stable. These strips are great, actually. I think this might be the first time I've used these. I think Amber might have used them for something, but I don't think I've used them before. They're pretty cool. I've had them for a long time. I just haven't used them. Maybe that's because I haven't done shaker cards before. There we go. And put a piece along here. So that's why it's important to make sure that that um, acetate is well adhered to the card front because we're now adhering um, the foam tape to that so it needs to be 
um, held in place really well. So we don't, we certainly do not want that lifting up. And we go along here. There we go. Okay. So now we've got our window. Okay. I think we are ready to adhere that down to our card front. Oh, then we can add our little um, snail. All right. So let's take that off. Oh, on the inside edge. Oh, along there. Ooh. Oh, I'm worried I'm going to wreck it. I don't know if I can get that in there. I don't know if I've left enough gap to get that in there. Um, hang on a sec. Let's see if I can get a little edge. Just along here, you reckon, Athena? I don't know if I'm doing this right. Is this what you mean, Athena? Am I doing it right? Hopefully that's what you meant. I don't know if I just did that right, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right, so let's remove all of this adhesive now. So we've got to remove all of the backing. Oh, I did it right? Yay. Thank you for that little tip. We'll see if that makes a difference. And I guess too before, because when I was laying it down, I was actually sitting it straight onto the um, the little confetti pieces. I wasn't, um, I didn't have it mounted up. So of course it's gonna, they're gonna stick. All right. Oh, now we're in a sticky situation. Okay, I'm ready to put this down. Oh, wish me luck, everyone. <gasps> Here we go. Now I've got to try and line it up. Now this piece is cut just a little bit smaller than this piece, but not by much. So I've got to try and line that up. Oh, they're starting to stick already. That's okay. I'll try and line this up as best as I can. There we go. Ah, I did it. Oh, I'm so excited. How cute is that? Sorry about my head in the camera, but I had to try and line that up. Oh, look. <laughs> How adorable. Give that all a really good push. So there's our shaker. How cute. Oh, I love that. Oh, see, now I want to make more. I want to make more shakers now. There we go. Okay. Ah, oh, thanks, Glenda. <laughs> oh, I'll know if it's not sticky. Okay, yep. Well, it seems to be pretty good. Like, they're not sticking too much now. They're a little bit, but not too bad. All right, let's attach our little snail in our envelope. Um, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, thanks, Megan. <laughs> I was so nervous putting that down. I thought, oh, gosh, what if I muck it up now I've gone this far? So, you know, I'm really happy with that. That's worked out really well. So let's see. We want a couple on that side and on that side of this shell. And we'll pop one under the present as well. There we go. So just putting some dimensionals on the back of the snail there, but not on the part that's going to overlap the acetate, just on the part that's going to be on the um, cardstock there. There we go. Super cute. Look at that cute little snail. And our little envelope is going to go on this side, but that's already got quite a bit of dimension. So I'm just going to attach that with some um, tear and tape. Oh, thanks everyone. I know I love it. It's so adorable. So we want to put a little bit of tape on this side. And I'll put a bit more up here. I'm going to just cut that. Um, let's see. And some at the top there. Is 
like so. And that's going to attach there like that. Okay, cool. So we've just got a bit of tape down on that side that's going to attach to the cardstock, not the part that's going to attach to the acetate. Although it could, because it's at the same, it's actually at the same level as the acetate, so it could. Oh, it's a little, it sits a little bit lower. So no, I'll just leave it just like that. That'll be enough to hold it anyway. This tape is super strong. If you've never used tear and tape, um, tear and tape is a super, super strong adhesive. Really great for 3D projects and anything that you want to stick and um, not go anywhere. There we go. There we go. There's our little card. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> How adorable is that? We've got all the little shakers in there with all the colours. So super cute. Oh, we've got one stuck. So what do you think? Do you like that? And then we can trim off these little ends too if they're a little bit too long. We can trim them off. But they're okay to stay a little bit longer than the card base anyway because when the card stands up, they'll just sit on the, um, on the surface that the card's sitting on. There we go. So super cute. You love it? Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, I love it. That's really cute. I'm really happy with how that turned out actually. I don't often work with sort of cutesy type stamp sets to be honest I do a lot of florals I don't often work with cutesy type um, designs but I really really liked this one really loved it oh, I'm so happy with that cool okay well I will flip the camera up so that I can say goodbye oh more hot and bothered now <laughs> oh thanks everyone thank you yeah super cute really happy with that so if you love these um products look out for them on the 5th of january um, it's the snail mail suite snail mail suite if you have a catalog um it's on page 55 54 and 55 of your january to june mini catalog so um yeah all right so let me just um cover up the camera i'm going to flip that up and in fact my battery is about to die so good timing i just Forgot to plug that in before. So just got that plugged in in time. All right. Um, ah, thanks, Chitska. <laughs> All right, let me cover up the camera. I'll flip that up. And then I can say goodbye to you all. Okay. Let's flip those cameras. There we go. All right. Oh, I'm all hot now. Look at me. <laughs> I'm all shiny, shiny, shiny. So there we go. We have our cute little shaker card. Our little snail mail shaker card. Let's see. I'll do my little photo thing. Ready? How cute is that? I love it. So now I have to decide if I'm going to keep it or give it away. Or maybe I have to make another one. One to keep, one to give away. <laughs> oh, thank you all for joining me today. That was super long. I know. I'm, I'm so sorry that was so long. But um, as you could see, there's quite a few steps in a shaker card. And um, this one, yeah, had quite a few little additional elements. So... But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that um, it has inspired you to give shaker cards a try. They're really not hard. They're just um, a bit time consuming, that's all. Um, but yeah, if you need any of the foam adhesive strip as well, um, look for that in the annual catalogue. I'll give you the code actually. It is 141825. 141825. And that's in the annual catalogue. So if you're making um, shaker cards, yes, I can highly recommend that because that worked really well for my shaker card so well thank you all for joining me um i hope that you have a great week uh what does megan say endless possibilities now that you've done that one i know right how many more am i going to do now i'm just going to go shake a card crazy i think <laughs> i really loved it and i'd love to use some of the other elements from that suite as well and make some other ones 
So um, yeah, I can't wait to post this one. I'll post this up tomorrow uh, on my uh, Facebook and I'll put that on Pinterest and Instagram and uh, I'll probably blog this one as well. So it'll be everywhere. You'll see it. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that you all have a fantastic week, the rest of the week. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday. I will be back next Monday and that'll be just the day before the new catalogue and celebration go live. So that'll be super exciting and I'll have some more new products for you and I already know what I have for you for next week. But I'm not going to, you'll have to come back next week. I'm not going to tell you. You have to come back next week and see what exciting new products I'll be playing with then. So until next Monday at four o'clock, have a great week and happy crafting. Bye.